of sorrow, praying for relief. Loving Father, hear me, strengthen my belief. I know my Savior promised, he'd never leave my side. Give me now, dear Father, faith is so be Let me sit at the feet of the Master. Jesus, to reach me here below, help me now, dear Father, help my heart to know, oh yes, my hope is heaven. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Sweeney First United Methodist Church. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. God put the sun in the sky, has made the wind to blow this morning, and has brought us here together so that we may love God and love each other. 
Because of this, I invite you to hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God that delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Friends, the word does, the Lord does hear the words of our sighing, the words of our worry, the words of our prayers. I know that there is much in this world that can seem to be a cause of worry and anxiety right now. The hurricane, COVID, the situation in Afghanistan. But God hears our prayers the big ones that affect the world and the little ones that affect even only just us. Because of this, I invite you this morning to share your joys and concerns, your prayer requests with each other and with God so that we may lift them up to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Katie? Yes. Uh, what was his name? Ames. What else? Yes, Frank. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything else? Oh, Johnny, Johnny Scarborough is... Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing. Is there anything else? Yes. Is your family all better? That's wonderful, that's great. Is there anything else? Okay. Well then, friends, I invite you to pray with me as we go to God. Let's pray. O oh God of all the earth, you are so big and over all the universe, and we know this and believe this. You are the source of our faith and of our life. You give life to us over and over again, pouring out your blessings, pouring out your miracles, pouring out your favor. And you are a God who also condescended to come down to our level in your son, Jesus Christ, to walk with us, to talk with us, to touch us with real hands, to speak to us with audible words. 
For this too, we give thanks. Lord, we pray for these reasons that we have to give thanks for this morning. You, your life, your salvation, as well as the healing of Jennifer and her family from COVID. Lord, we give you thanks for this. We poured out those prayers on your altar and you received them and you delivered them. For you are good and we do give thanks. But Lord, for those still battling COVID, we lift them up with special prayers that you would protect them, that you would heal them for Bud and for his family, for Jim and his family, for Russell, Johnny, and all of their families that from COVID and flu and from all sickness, Lord, that you would rebuke the sickness, that you would bring peace and healing to your people, our brothers and sisters. We also pray for Ames family as he has passed away from a heart attack. Lord, I pray that you would receive him into your care and that you would pour out special peace and comfort on his family. We also pray for the Dodson family with the surgery upcoming, that you would give skill and wisdom to the doctor's hands, that it would be a success, that you would come home safe and sound to her family again. As you once healed them from COVID, Lord, let this surgery go well and bring them back to all of us safe and sound. Lord, these issues can seem so huge and overwhelming, and so much more it must be for all those suffering from COVID, for those who might be sick or fear getting sick, for the doctors and nurses who feel overworked, for the leaders who are struggling to make the right decision. Lord, pour out wisdom, pour out love, pour out your grace on us all, and deliver us from this pandemic as you have delivered your people from slavery, captivity, and sickness before. Lord, we also pray for our brothers and sisters in Louisiana and the other parts of the country as this hurricane barrels down on them. Lord, your son Jesus Christ once rebuked the storm and it was still, and I pray that you would do the same again. Make the storm still, the wind still, the rain still, and keep your children safe from all harm. And let the leaders who have the power to act and provide safety and protection and care, let them act out of your love. Finally, we also pray for the situation in Afghanistan. Our heart breaks for all the time spent there, all the lives lost there and that are still getting lost, Lord. We know that your heart breaks for them too. Protect them, Lord, with your army of angels. Deliver them from the enemy and from all works of evil. And keep everyone there safe. Pour out your grace on all of them, our brothers and sisters, through you, our Father God. For it is in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen. I now invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship in the garden. I come to the garden Our first hymn this morning is Amazing Grace from the hymnal number 378. was great. 
Amen. You may be seated. Amazing grace taught my heart to fear and taught our hearts to believe. It is by God's grace that we have come together this morning. It is by God's grace that we have the faith that we do passed down to us through generations for 2,000 years and for so many years after us. Because of this, believing this and believing in the grace of God, I invite you to join me and the church on heaven and on earth in saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Every week we say the prayer of confession and announce the pardon together. As we approach this time in the service again, I invite you to confess, not because we have reason to feel ashamed or reason to fear God's retribution, but because we are invited to be redeemed as forgiven and holy people, the saints and the friends of God. So please pray the confession with me together, saying, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, Christ, you you are are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Please rise as you are able for our second hymn this morning, Maker in Whom We Live, from the hymnal number 88.
everlasting praise indeed you may be seated and I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's moment Just us? Hi, what's your name? Amala? Amelia. My name is Pastor Quinn. Nice to meet you, Amelia. Uh, so tell me, do you have a favorite Bible story? No, no favorite Bible story? Okay. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, maybe Moses parting the Red Sea or Noah's Ark with the flood with all the animals that came up on the Ark? Yeah, you have? Okay. That, that's a good story there. Uh, what happens is that there's a lot of rain that comes down, and it floods the world. But God warned Noah ahead of time, and so God told Noah to big a bil- build a big old boat so that two of every animal, a mama and a daddy, could be on that boat so that they could survive the flood, and that after the flood went away, they could all be back on land again. Because God saves us from all sorts of things. God saves us from sickness. God saves us from people who are mean to us. God saves us from when our feelings get hurt. God saves us from natural disasters too. God's salvation covers all of us, all the way, totally. Because of this, let's hear a reading uh, scripture from Miss Bridget. I'll do it with you, Amelia. We can do it together. He's beating me. I think she did too. Uh, you and Amelia. Good job. High five. Hey, do you want to ring a bell? Have you ever rang the bell before? It's been a while since I played in sports, but uh, wee I got beat pretty bad there. 
Friends, our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. This is the message which we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But... If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some of you might have noticed we have a visitor this morning. He's hiding there in in the back corner. His name is Kyle, and he is my best friend in the whole wide world. He's visiting me this Sunday to see me uh, lead worship for the first time. We've been friends for uh, eight years now, I think, which is, that kind of hurts to say, eight years. My gosh. We were were freshman roommates in our dorm at the University of Arkansas, Woo Pig. Uh, I'm sure everyone is rolling their eyes at me for feeling like eight years is a long time. But my buddy Kyle and I are really good friends. We're best friends. We're pretty similar, and we agree on about 90% of things. We're both sports fanatics, especially for football. We both love to travel, especially to football games. Uh, We both love to watch movies. Both of our majors were liberal arts majors. We took several classes together. And we both went to grad school and graduated from grad school earlier this year. In that 10% of things that we don't agree on, though, the thing is is that we can sometimes, most of the time, really, really disagree. And the good thing is that when it comes to many of those disagreements, most of them, it's almost always something completely trivial and pointless, like football or sports or like Star Wars. For example, we have had arguments about this Star Wars movie or that Star Wars movie, or about this basketball player or that basketball player, or that that girl I dated freshman year of college was good for me or whether she was bad for me. I'll admit, Kyle, you did end up being right about that last one. But I'm definitely right about Star Wars, so it evens out. So as you can see, we are pretty similar, and that means that we can both be pretty stubborn. Neither one of us likes to admit when we're wrong, especially if it means the other one is right. Mm Mm-mm, can't be. Uh, I know we're not alone among human beings in this, though. People in general tend to hate admitting any wrongdoing or fault, especially to avoid those dreaded, I told you so's. It's hard to admit that you were wrong about something, honestly, but that seems a bit strange to me. On the surface, it should be easy to admit, I was wrong about something, okay, now I know, let's move on. It doesn't seem like it should be that difficult until Kyle and I are fighting about which football team is going to win a game, and then, well, my team turns out to lose, and it feels like I would rather chuck my phone into the nearest lake than look at his latest text message. This kind of stubbornness can be a legitimately fatal flaw especially when it comes up in matters a little more serious than Star Wars or football. When you get into a fight with a family member and it's one of those real have-it-out, air-out, old grievances kind of fights, and if one or both parties is unwilling to admit any kind of fault or uh, uh, responsibility for that fight at all, then that fight can turn into a real rift. And that rift can last sometimes for weeks or months or even years because neither party was willing to admit any wrongdoing or fault at all. Or consider someone struggling with addiction. If they are an alcoholic and that uh, alcoholic is, uh, that alcohol addiction is tearing at their body and their mind and their wallet and they're unwilling to admit that they have a problem, then they're not going to be able to go and get help. And if they can't get help, then they will continue their downward spiral toward bankruptcy and hospitalization or worse. 
An example we can probably all relate to, uh, at least before COVID, is starting to feel sick in some way, a cough, a pain, or a stomach issue, but thinking, oh, I don't feel that bad. I certainly don't need any medicine, and I certainly don't need to go to a doctor. I'm fine. Until that cough or that pain or whatever it is starts to linger and maybe get worse, and then you do have to even reluctantly go see a doctor. You can't heal a rift in a relationship if you're not willing to admit any responsibility for that rift at all. You can't get help for your addiction if you're not willing to admit that you have a problem. And you can't get treated and healed by a doctor if you can't admit that you're sick and need to go see a doctor in the first place. And yet, we human beings struggle to do this all the time. All the time. It is a fatal flaw that every human being carries. That goes for us Christians, too. We, too, also carry this fatal flaw. We, too, like every other human being, have this disposition, this instinct within us that hates to admit wrongdoing or fault. Which is ironic, pretty ironic, because at the core tenet of our faith is the idea that we need to confess our wrongdoing and fault. We call that confession. Confession is a core idea and a core activity at the very heart of our Christian faith. It's so important that Christians for centuries, since the very beginning of the church 2,000 years ago, have chanted words of confession together during worship. Every worship, every Sunday, all over the world, Christians of various denominations chant confessions. Kyle is Catholic. Can you comment? No? Okay. No, that's all right. Uh, We do this confession every Sunday too. My question for us this morning, though, is why? Why do we confess every Sunday on this weekly basis? Why do we need to confess on a regular basis? Maybe you've asked that question yourself, even if silently. I've asked it before. Are we confessing to make sure that we're forgiven? Are we confessing to make sure we stay out of hellfire? Are we confessing to make sure that God isn't mad at us? or to earn God's favor and blessing? Our scripture from this morning will help us answer these questions, and it will show us two answers to this question of why do we confess. The first answer is what confession is not. From verse 5 from our scripture reading, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Think back to when you were little and you broke a house rule. Maybe you were playing somewhere you shouldn't have been, or maybe you were playing with something you shouldn't have been, and then something broke. A pot, a vase, a glass. You were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing, and now something is broken, and now there is unhideable evidence that you were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing. And so now you're going to have to fess up to mom or dad or to grandma and grandpa or whoever, you're going to have to confess. And you know that when you confess, dad is going to be angry or grandma is going to be angry and there is going to be punishment. Friends, God doesn't work that way. In him is light and only light and there is no darkness in him at all. In him is mercy and grace and love and patience, and forgiveness. And there is no hatred, or shame, or deceit in God at all. So the first answer to our question, what confession is not, is it is not a scary thing to do. Confession is not something that we have to do to make sure that God isn't mad at us. It's not something that we have to do in order to exchange our confession for God's mercy like some sort of divine vending machine or a get-out-of-hell-free card. And when we confess, God does not follow up that confession with punishment. He follows it up with grace, with mercy, with forgiveness, and with redemption. Confession is not about saving ourselves from God's wrath. 
1 John can also point us to the answer of what confession is, our second answer for the morning. From our scripture reading, verse 8, if we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. The addict can't get help if they don't admit that they have a problem. A sick person can't be healed if they don't admit that they're sick and go to see a doctor. So it is with us. Every human being carries the fatal flaw of not wanting to admit to being wrong. But that fatal flaw, along with every other flaw that can affect a person, whatever it may be, is really just a symptom of a disease. That disease is called sin. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, eating of the forbidden fruit, they infected themselves with this disease. And that disease spread from them to their children, to their grandchildren, to all subsequent generations throughout the earth. Now all human beings suffer from this sin disease. The symptoms aren't always the same. Some symptoms can include an intense anger. And because of this, a person may be prone to lashing out at others. Other symptoms may include a deep sadness, a melancholy. And because of this, a person may lash out at themselves and hurt themselves. Likewise, greed, pride, selfishness, lying and deceit are all symptoms of this one disease, the disease we've called sin. Now, I know that when Christians talk about sin, we tend to focus on these symptoms like anger, like greed, like pride. And we shouldn't ignore those. Those are real symptoms, and that sin is real. But they are symptoms. And we can't ignore the underlying disease that's at the heart of those systems, symptoms. And so that, that is what confession is. Admitting that we have a problem. Admitting that we are sick with this sin disease and that we need help. That is what we're confessing. Now, know that this understanding of sin was actually a favorite of John Wesley's. Wesley was the founder of the Methodist Church and brought Methodism over uh, to America from England, where he was from. He compared sin to a disease frequently, like a spiritual virus that all human beings are born with. But Wesley knew that there was a cure to this disease, too. He said this, in quote, Jesus Christ is the great physician sent to heal the sin-sick soul. We often call Jesus Lord, Savior, King, and that's good and right to do. But Jesus is also our physician. Jesus is our doctor. Jesus alone has the cure for both our sin symptoms and for the sin disease itself. And so what our confession is, is a church trip to the doctor's office. An appointment that we make together with this great physician of the soul. From our scripture reading, verse 9. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So notice in there the dual treatment that we get on our church trip to the doctor's office. Forgiveness and cleansing. We need both. If one is forgiven for their outburst of anger or for lying to someone, that's good. But that doesn't prevent another outburst of anger from occurring. That doesn't prevent any further lies from being told. Just like the attic, one might fight off temptation for one night, but might not fight it off the next night. The addict needs treatment for the addiction. We need treatment for the sin disease, both forgiveness and cleansing. The physician of the soul gives us both treatments, forgiving our sin symptoms and cleansing us of the sin disease itself. That is the good news. Because of Jesus, we are not just sick people who can be treated. We are sick people who can be cured. 
That's why we say the pardon after we confess every Sunday. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are cured. Those flaws need not be fatal. Those symptoms need not drag you down anymore. That disease need not make you sick any longer. So when we confess together on Sundays during worship, know that it's not a cause to feel guilty. It's an invitation to be healed. Know that it's not a plea to get out of punishment. It's an assurance that we will be cleansed. And Jesus Christ, our friend, our physician, our cure, is faithful to cleanse us of all sin and to lead us to eternal health for eternal life. Thanks be to God. From our scripture reading, verse 7, the Bible emphasizes that it is the blood of Jesus which cleanses us of sin symptoms and sin disease. That blood is here in this. This blood is our divine medicine prescribed by our physician. Lucky for us, it's not sour and doesn't taste like usual medicine. It's sweet. It's juicy. This is our medicine as we work towards holistic health. So friends, take, eat, and drink the body and blood of Christ. And let the blood of Christ mix with your own and become your blood. And we will all be cured. This table is Christ's table. He, our doctor, our physician, does not deny any patients, whoever they may be, their age, their belief system, their sinfulness or their saintliness, their sickness or their health, all are invited to come and receive the great medicine of our great physician, Jesus Christ. So I invite you to say the great thanksgiving with me, saying, The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away in sickness and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and gave us healing from generation to generation. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, the physician Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would heal your people. Indeed, Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, broke the bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, cast it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness and cleansing of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be to the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ returns in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through him, your Son, our doctor, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as healed Christians, let us say the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we receive the Lord's body and blood this morning, we'll do it as we have on previous mornings because of the rising cases in this pandemic. You'll come forward, you'll receive one of these packets. You'll come forward down the middle aisle, that is. You'll receive one of these packets, and then you'll proceed to the outside of the aisles and then back to your seat. Once you're there, once everyone has uh, the packet, we will open the bread and eat the bread together. Then we will open the juice and drink the juice together. Now, because I forgot to ask someone to help me volunteer for this this morning, would someone like to come forward and help me pass out communion this morning? Yes. Come, taste and receive the sweet medicine of the Lord. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. We now open the bread. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And the juice. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Thanks be to God. This is the time in service in which we pass the offering plates around. Known that we have received grace through the sacrament of Holy Communion, grace that is infused in our body, healing our body, transforming our body. As cleansed and transformed friends of God, God invites us to participate in the transformation that he is working all over the world. So this morning as the plates come around, I invite you to give joyfully knowing that your resources and time and support helps make ministry in this church come alive, as well as in our whole community and throughout all God's world.
Please remain standing for our final hymn this morning, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, from the hymnal number 400. Amen. That's one of my favorites. You may be seated. In this part of the service, we celebrate the life and love that God has made possible for us in creating us and in creating the institution of marriage. So our birthdays for this Sunday are uh, Carrie Dodson. Happy birthday. As well as Bridget Singletary. Happy birthday, Bridget. And Chris Horn. Is Chris Horn here? Nope. Well, we can sing uh, everyone a happy birthday anyway. Greg? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. I, for one, choose to believe that Chris Horn somewhere stood up for that. <laughs> Were there any other birthdays I missed? I forgot to ask before we sang. Cle- all clear then. Uh, our anniversaries that I know of are coming up in just, I think they told me, three days, Greg and Lori Wiggers. <laughs> are there any other anniversaries? Well, Kyle and I's Fantasy Football League from all of our undergrad friends is having our fantasy draft tonight, which is a bit of an anniversary. We're excited about that. But Okay, uh, announcements. Unless there are other anniversaries. Did I already ask that? No. Announcements. Uh, we're still looking for vendors for our fall, our fall vendor show, which I believe is coming up in October. Um, that's another fundraiser for the church that helps us keep the lights on and do ministry. So please if, uh, get the word out. We'll try and share it on Facebook. If you know anybody who's interested, uh, they can contact Marty or I at the church office. And the next announcement I'm really excited for in particular, uh, Bridget has some wonderful ideas, and she's helped me come up with a new ministry uh, it's called Spark Ministries. It's a ministry that's going to be specifically targeting for young adults, as well as uh, young couples, young parents, and for young children. We're having a kickoff, our first Spark Night, on Saturday, September 18th, from 5 to 7 p.m. We'll be getting the word out around that. We think there's, there's a lot of opportunity here to, to reach out to young people, young parents, and young children. We will be feeding them, and we will be playing games So the kickoff is on Saturday, September 18th, which also happens to be my birthday. And then uh, every subsequent Wednesday for the next nine Wednesdays, which will run up to the week before Thanksgiving, our Spark Nights will be on Wednesday night. We will feed the young people and the young children. We'll uh, do a Bible study together with them as well. So we're really excited for that opportunity. We are looking for volunteer cooks to help us feed people on those Wednesday nights. So if, if you're hoping to throw some food at people, please let me know and we can schedule that. 
Are there any other announcements? Yeah. Backpack Buddies helps feed a lot of kids. Thank you for that, Sherry. Are there any other announcements? Oh, yeah, you start classes tomorrow? Yeah, you excited? Or no? <laughs> you start classes too? Yeah. Well, we'll say an extra prayer for you guys as another semester dawns upon you. Having just finished school for good last May, May God's grace be upon you. May you one day get to this point. If there are no other announcements, then uh, we will stand together and raise our hands in the air to say the benediction. Blessed are those who hear the word and do the word. Blessed be the tie that blinds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Amen. Go in grace and peace. Nice to meet you.